Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. A New Kind of War, written by Mr. Grinder. It was a good day. The sun was shining, it was reasonably warm, and not even a single cloud was to be seen. It was a good day for battle. Aramal sat in his horse and looked at the green fields that were laying around them. The main part of his army was positioned between two hills, giving the flanks at least some protection. In front row were a few archers he had. Behind them stood the spearmen who had made up the largest part of his troops. In the last line was the heavy infantry. On the hills themselves was a light cavalry, positioned to stop any flanking attempt and alarm him of any incoming troops. Most of the men serving under his command were elvish peasants. A few real soldiers were amongst the light cavalry and heavy infantry, but no more than two hundred. A ridiculously weak and inexperienced army. If this would be a real war with an actual opponent on his opposing side, he wouldn't even dare to use such an army. He would use the standing royal army of his king, all battle-hardened veterans. But... He and his king both agreed that this as drastic step as mobilizing the army wasn't needed to deal with the current matter. No, after all, Aramel was just tasked with putting down a human rebellion. The humans had been a part of the High Kingdom for a long time. They lived in separate cities and villages, used different roads, and had to pay different taxes. All in all, the humans were closer to slaves than real citizens of the Elvish kingdom. And it's only natural that they would be. After all, they were just savages, not able to understand the culture and values of the elves. Normally, an elven army wouldn't even be sent to deal with a human insurrection. Another human slave army would just be mobilized to put down any rebellion. After all, an elf doesn't need to dirty his hands with any human matter. For such trivial things, we have other humans. But this time was different. It seemed like this time the humans had mobilized their whole race. Not even a single human lord wanted honor of putting down this insurrection. Instead, they swore fealty to a human king. What insolence! How can there be any king besides the High King of the Elves? Not even any another race, neither the dwarves nor the dark elves, dared to use the word king for their leaders. But the humans did. Their so-called king, Frederick, sent a messenger to the royal court announcing that the human kingdom was, from this day, an independent state. Of course, the messenger was instantly executed for his insubordination, but nonetheless... One of the court officials was appointed the task of putting the humans back in their place. He himself, the master of swords, Aramel, was chosen. And even though it was no task that promised glory, he was set on dealing with this matter as diligently as possible. When his scouts had informed him that the human army was just two hours away, he decided to challenge them to battle and had brought his troops in formation on a field of his liking. He was surprised at how fast the humans reacted to his challenge. He expected at least some kind of doubt by the human commanders. But instead, they seemed to be determined to go to battle. And so, soon the human army had taken formation in orderly lines on the other side of the plains. Aramal turned to his second-in-command. What do you think? His second-in-command was a local elvish noble who had volunteered for the job. He was too young and lacked experience, but he had studied the art of war and possessed a sharp wit. I am not sure. They seem to have taken up a standard battle line. They are missing any archers, and the whole line seems to be made up of infantrymen. Well, they are savages. Yes, of course, sir. But even those lowly savages seem to possess at least some ability in the matters of warfare. They mainly adopted owl formations even though they don't use archers as much as the royal army. They normally have at least a few set up to harass their opponents. His second-in-command had just confirmed his suspicion. Something was wrong. 
No one goes into battle without skirmishes. And even if they did, the human infantry was also odd. They seemed to wear no armor and carried no shields. They just had some strange wooden and iron stinks. And furthermore, he had definitely seen that there were horse drawing strange iron tubes behind them. But they soon vanished behind a hill. While Aramal was pondering about what this meant and what his next steps would be, he was interrupted by the sound of thunder. It seems like a storm is closing in, said his second in command, looking up at the sky. But there aren't any clouds. Suddenly, the young elf was thrown from his horse. Dirt was thrown into the air and came raining down on Aramal. His horse started to panic and tried to run away. Aramal had to use all the riding skills he had to stay on its back and regain control. He looked around. First, eyes fell on a dead body of his second in command. His right arm was torn off and his face bathed in blood. His horse had fallen, burying the lower half of the young elf. Next, his sight fell onto his army. All over the line were holes in the formation. The lower ranks were in chaos. Only the heavy infantry remained some kind of disciplined. How is this possible? He rumbled. Catapults? No, there aren't any catapults that can shoot this far. Furthermore, they can't prepare them this fast. Just setting them up would take hours. Magic? No way. Humans don't possess magic, and even if they did, this would be a high level spell. He never heard of such a strong magic. No matter what it was, if we were to stay, we would be destroyed. Retreat is no option. It would be looked down upon if I were to retreat in front of humans. Attack, it is. Sound the attack signal, he shouted. He was pleasantly surprised when he immediately heard the horn being blown. It seemed like at least some of his officers remained calm and preserved discipline. His troops began to advance towards the human line. Those that were hit by the attack were pushed forward by those who weren't, and slowly the gap between both armies started to close. He signaled his light cavalry to secure their flanks and sent out an order to the archers. They were tasked with falling back and shooting on the enemy from behind friendly troops. Again, he heard the thunder, and soon again there seemed to be impacts all over the field, when most of them missed the now-moving army and impacted behind them. He could also get a short glance at one of the objects that fell from the sky. It looked just like a simple metal ball. If this is all they have up their sleeves, we'll be sure to defeat them. Soon they cleared half of their way over the field. His army was now in much better shape than before. The humans had two more times thrown those metal balls at them, but with as close to no effect. Aramal drew his sword and made his horse go faster. He would personally disperse this rebel army and avenge the fallen elves. He would be at the front line. Nan! In the name of the High King, charge! He let out a battle cry at the top of his lungs. Soon, his troops picked up and began running towards the enemy. He joyfully noticed morale was at its height. But just a few meters later again, he could hear the sound of thunder. But it was different. It seemed smaller, but much more numerous. He didn't notice what it was until the first line of elves fell dead to the ground. The following men lost balance as they stumbled across the bodies of the dead comrades. Smoke was rising from the human army, making them nearly invisible. The battle cry of the elves had suddenly died down. He was dead silent. He could only hear the cries of the wounded men and faint orders from the human side. Again, the sound of thunder. The next line of soldiers fell. He felt how fear gripped his heart. Suddenly, he noticed that he was bleeding. Red blood was seeping out of his armor, flowing down his leg and dripping on the ground. He was distracted by the sound of hooves closing in. He looked at the direction it came from, hoping to see a light cavalry. But the only thing he saw of them were men and horses either lying dead on the ground or fleeing the battlefield. It was over, he knew. Darkness enclouded his vision, and the sounds of his men fleeing faded away. How is he? asked Oberst Heinrich von Wagen. 
He was standing inside a rather small tent, only offering enough place for the small bunk bed, and the doctor looking at the patient, or rather prisoner, lying on the bed. He is, uh, fine, said the doctor. Heinrich looked at her and raised one of his eyebrows. Fine, yes. You know, my task is to report to the general if he will survive or not. Fine is not really helping. The doctor took off her headscarf, revealing her long brown hair. Calvin physique is not entirely researched, and I don't know if we will survive. If he would be a human, he would have died of blood loss. But as he is an elf, I'm not sure. He might survive, or not. For now, he is fine. So I report to the general we'll have to wait and see. Exactly. I will now go and look at my human patients. She threw a quick look of disdain at the elf, and quickly left the tent. Heinrich followed her. We have taken casualties, he asked in a tone of disbelief. Nothing as serious as that. Some cavalrymen have bruises from where they skirmished with the enemy cavalry. One artillery crewman dropped a cannonball on his foot. That's about it. Good day, Herr Erbust, she stopped, turned, saluted, and quickly headed to the field hospital. Good day, Frau Stabs Watson, he shouted after her grinning. He turned to the two soldiers guarding the tent. Call me as soon as he wakes up. Sir, what about the doctor? asked one of the men. Her as well, of course. Then Heinrich turned around and headed to the tent of the general. His way led him through the human encampment. It didn't feel like they had just fought a battle. They felt more like training did back before the war. Most of the men were taking care of the weapons, cleaning their uniform, or talking with their friends. His own artillery regiment had gone out to analyze the landing patterns of the different shots they fired to increase future accuracy. He also swore that he could see some men gambling and drinking, but he wouldn't stop them. Not today. Not on the day of victory. Everyone was happy and in a festive mood. There was no soldier crying because they lost a close friend or crippled people thinking about what they'll do now. The tent of the general was large, made of red fabric, and had a circular shape. Inside were the commanding officers of the army. In the middle of the tent was a large table with a map of Alvin High Kingdom. At the table stood General von Holmsdorf, an old man, but nonetheless tall with very muscular arms. His grey hair was cut short, and his whole pride, a large grey moustache, was groomed to perfection. His finger pointed at a map. The second and third army have advanced along the Bolton River and taken the city of Alfolen. The fourth army has taken Norunda and are en route to Dandarin. We will advance along this road and start besieging the capital. The second army will reinforce us there, while the third army will disperse any hastily assembled army by the elves. If everything continues to go as well as it has, this war will be over in two months. The general looked up. Ah, Oberst von Bergen, your artillery regiment performed perfect during the battle. Thank you, your excellency. But our aim is quite off. We still have a lot to learn. Heinrich responded. You think too low of yourself, Oberst. After all this was the first time those cannons were tested under battle conditions. Under these circumstances, you perform perfectly. But certainly not only the artillery deserves praise. The cavalry was the major factor in finally breaking the enemy and dispersing the troops. Sure, sure, the cavalry women performed also perfect. They looked at the commanding officer of the cavalry. She quickly saluted and said, Thank you, Your Excellency. Very well, this concludes everything for today. We will stay here for another day to replenish our ammunition and head out the day after tomorrow. You are dismissed. The officers start making their way out of the tent. Over Steinrock, could you please wait for a moment? As soon as the last man left the tent, the general looked Heinrich deep in the eye. Jeez, why can't you just take a compliment? said the general. It'll only create problems if the different results get envious of each other or get a feeling that they are treated unfairly, Heinrich said. The general sighed, however, take a seat. He lets himself fall into a comfortable chair, takes two glasses and a wine bottle out of a chest, and pours some in each of them. Heinrich takes himself a chair, positions himself right next to the general, and takes one glass. So, Heinrich, how is our guest? Fine, Heinrich responded. Fine, yes, fine. Margaret says that he might survive. She is not quite sure. If our guest would be human, he would be dead, but, well, 
He obviously isn't. We can only wait and see. I see, so I will guess I'll have to wait until I report back to the capital. The general sighed again and took a quick sip of wine. So, the war is going good. Yeah, it is. The general took another sip. They didn't expect that we would hit them this hard. But finally, all this work, building an army, creating new weapons and tactics from scratch, building up our economy, has come to fruition. Finally, we are able to spit these damn long ears in the face. Finally, we are able to claim our freedom. He raised his glass. For our freedom. Heinrich as well raised his glass. For our freedom. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click with energy. And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kumbaka.